So last week I posted a video about a little project I was making called Empire, and the response was pretty amazing with many people wanting a part 2, and so here we are. Quite a lot of these comments were suggestions, and I do implement some of them in this video, however quite a lot of them were from people who don't really understand what Cellular Automaton is. You see, Cellular Automaton is cells on the grid interacting with neighbouring cells. So things like people building cities and building farms, while good suggestions, they don't really make sense in terms of Cellular Automaton. But those interesting suggestions will not go to waste because I could quite possibly add those in a future project. So anyways, let's actually start the video now, starting off with a few things that I added off camera. If I run this simulation, the first thing that you'll probably notice is that the text that shows like the colonies and how many people were in them is missing. But it's not missing, it's just hidden. In part 1 of this video, the number one complaint in the comments was that the text was somewhat covering everything and you couldn't really see what was going on. And so by default I've made the text hidden. Another thing that people were pointing out was that their colonies were basically taking up a lot of the text. And so when colonies are now completely dead and there's no one left in them, I just take it off the list and it doesn't get drawn onto the GUI. And when you have a lot of colonies, this is oddly satisfying to look at. The next thing I added was keyboard input, so you could zoom in and pan around the world. So for this you can press WANSD to sort of just move around the world and use the arrow keys to zoom in and out. And the final and probably the most easiest thing that I added off camera was wrapping, and this basically means that when people reach one side of the world they just appear on the other side given there's land there. And well with that being said, let's actually get back into the code now. One of these suggestions that I got quite a lot was the ability to have custom colonies. This means a few things, it means you're able to choose where the colony starts, you're able to choose how strong the colony is, and you're able to choose their colour. So to do this I basically split colony creation into two separate classes, one for custom colonies and one for, you know, the random old start colonies. The user is then able to edit the config.txt file to choose which one actually gets used. This can be done in the config file by changing the number under custom start from 0 to 1. With the number being 0, it just works as normal, where there's just a random placement for a bunch of colonies. For the custom colony placement to work, you need the corresponding file for the image you are using. For example, as you can see, the image that I'm using is mars.png, and I have a corresponding mars file at the top there called mars.txt. The format of these files are fairly simple. Each colony is split into four sections. The first section tells the program where the colony actually starts from. Finding the locations where you want the colony to actually start from is fairly easy. For example, here I have mars.png opened up in paint.net. Let's just say I want the start point to be where the red cross is. In paint.net I am able to find the location of my mouse in an image using the display where the blue circle is. And so, if I move my mouse to where I want the start point to be, I can see that it needs to be at 265142. So in the start section I can just type in 265142 and that's where the colony is going to start from. The next section is strength and this just says the range of values for the strength to be started at for the people of that colony. So for this colony I want it to range from 100 to 1000. The next section, people, is just how many people the colony starts with. And the final section refers to the RGB values for the colony's colour. So for testing, I'm going to have two colonies, one very strong and one a lot weaker, and let's see what happens. For this test, I made it so the red people were a lot stronger than the um, pink purple people. And as you can see, they're getting absolutely destroyed by the red people. Another very common suggestion that I got was people moving across the ocean via swimming or boats or whatever. To keep things nice and simple, I decided to go with a swimming approach. So to do this, when people reach the ocean, they're going to have a very small chance to start swimming. And when people start swimming, they're just going to be travelling in a straight line until they reach land or they die. The reason why I made them travel in a straight line across the ocean is pretty simple. It's because otherwise they'll just sort of scatter around the coastlines, which doesn't really make sense. Furthermore, when people are in the ocean, they're not able to reproduce. The first test can be seen here, and it didn't exactly go great because I could hardly tell if people were actually swimming or not. But when they were swimming, they were sort of just getting stuck around the coastlines or getting stuck in the middle of the ocean, which was really strange. As a test to fix this, I made it so people were able to reproduce in the ocean. Not only does it look like an awesome laser show, it also proves that swimming is actually working. So if swimming is working, then why on earth are people getting stuck in clumps and random places in the ocean? 
The problem was the people travelling in a straight line. When two people from the same colony meet, they get stuck in each other as they're blocking each other's path. And over time, these people were just clustering together, basically. So to fix this, I simply made it so when people meet in the ocean, they just turn around and go the other way. So let's see how this turns out. And well, pretty quickly, something was already going wrong. We have been left with two groups of people living together in equilibrium. And the problem with this is that the idea of the simulation was that only one colony would survive to become an empire. In other words, swimming wasn't really working out for me, so I decided to ultimately remove it. But the code actually does still support it, so all you have to do is actually remove this comment if you plan to build the code yourself, and then you can see why swimming didn't really work out for me. But luckily, as a compromise, Lisbon Mapping from my Discord server found a solution which was basically to have discrete land bridges between every island of the world. And well, I guess that's pretty much it. So anyways, I would like to quickly take a moment to thank all of my Patreon supporters. Thank you Snappyasoap318, Stanley Morris, Synthetic aka Hayden, Timothy Gibbons, Alchemic, Harry Godden, Rutgut Glamour, Guy Kimo Patton, and Andrew Blevins. Uh, I felt like this wasn't exactly my greatest video in the world, and I'm a little sorry about that if you feel that way. But nonetheless, once again, thank you for watching, and goodbye.